Welcome to Georgia Highlands College Math 97 and Math 99 video tutorials. In this video segment, we'll be answering the question, how do you subtract rational expressions when the denominators are the same? Well, it's just about the same as when you're adding rational expressions with a common denominator, but there's a little bit of difference when it comes to um, subtracting a polynomial. So, subtract the numerators over the common denominator first. And that's going to set up the situation where you're going to have a negative one that needs to be distributed to that second polynomial in the numerator, which is basically just changing the signs of the terms in that particular polynomial. Then you're going to combine like terms in the numerator and finish it off by factoring and simplifying. Let's take a look at some of the theory behind it and an example to help us understand it. All right, so if you have p over r and q over r, where they are rational expressions, then p, p over r minus q over r is simply p minus q, so those, those two polynomials being subtracted over that common denominator of r, which is also, in this case, a polynomial. So in words, to subtract rational expressions with the same denominator, subtract the numerators and place that over the common denominator. Distribute the negative one to the terms of the second numerator, combine the like terms, factor, and simplify. So let's take a look at how this example um, works out when we apply these steps. So we have 5x plus one over x squared minus nine and we're going to subtract 4x minus 2 over x squared minus 9. So notice we already have the very nice situation of having common denominators here. So our common denominator is x squared minus 9. The first step in this process is to subtract your numerators over your common denominator. So first, before I do that, I'm just going to make sure that you realize that those stick together like that. So, so the 5x plus 1 is a factor and the 4x minus 2 is a factor. So I just subtract my numerators over my common denominator. Now, hopefully you noticed that there is an understood negative one that needs to be multiplied with that second binomial. And just to point this out as well, there's an understood positive one in front of that first binomial. So we do this distribution, which it does not change anything for that first binomial. However, when you distribute that negative one to the second binomial, you're going to end up changing the signs of the terms within. So this is what it looks like. We have positive 5x, positive 1. Now we have negative 4x and positive 2, all over our common denominator x squared minus 9. The next step in the process is to combine like terms in your numerator. So positive 5x and negative 4x leaves us with positive 1x. And positive 1 and positive 2 give positive 3. And we have the common denominator of x squared minus 9. So now we're on to the last step, which is to factor anything in the numerator and denominator that can be factored and see if we've got common factors that can divide out to simplify this expression. So once again, I'll just point out that this is an entire factor in the numerator. And I'd also like to point out that there is an understood positive one being multiplied with that binomial. And there's a very important reason that I just put, it, put that there. All right, so we have 1 times x plus 3 in our numerator. And looking at our denominator, this is a difference of squares. It fits in that mold of something squared minus something squared. 
So that denominator factors as x plus 3 times x minus 3. Now looking back, we want to see if we have any common factors that we can divide out. And sure enough, x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 is just 1. So now you can see why I put that positive 1 being multiplied up top. A lot of times students will get confused if there's nothing left at the top. They think that that's 0. And that's just not so because there wouldn't even be um, the numerator there if it were 0. So something is there holding it. And it's that understood positive 1 being multiplied. So our final answer here, our final answer is 1 over x minus 3. All right. So this has been an example of how to subtract rational expressions with common denominators. And just to recap really quickly, you're going to subtract your numerators over your common denominator, but that creates the situation where you're going to need to distribute the negative 1 to that second polynomial being subtracted. Combine your like terms and uh, factor and simplify if you can. You might not have anything to do at the end, which is also nice. If you have any other questions about how to subtract rational expressions with common denominators, please talk to your Highlands instructor. Thank you.